Hello, welcome back to Mastering System Center Operations Manager 2016. Stephen Homan here. And this is the beginning of Section 4 on gathering monitoring requirements. And our, really our first three videos, what we discussed was a foundation of management pack and such, and how those work and what those control. And now we're moving really into the next level of the course, where we're going to talk about gathering the information and starting to apply some of the things that we've learned in the uh, management pack course. So this is Section 4. And so we have our first video, 4.1, which goes over a gathering methodology. One of the biggest challenges that I've found as an operations manager um, administrator is trying to get the information out of my key people that need monitoring, answering the question exactly, what is it that you need to monitor? Most of the time you're dealing with a disconnect. So let's uh, take a look at what we're going to see. We're going to look at how we can gather this information for monitoring against different servers, monitors, how we want to notify um, those people that there is a problem, and how we want to address things like maintenance windows. So this is really trying to get the information out because as an administrator, we rarely know exactly what needs to be monitored. But as an end user of the system or as administrator of the system we're monitoring, our end users and uh, administrators rarely know what SCOM can do. So we have to tie the two together. And so let's talk about how we can do that. First off, I like to go over the pitfalls that I've seen out there, the things that can catch you. First off, there is um, generally not enough information. And that's whether there's not enough information for you as the administrator, or uh, conversely, not enough information for the administrator of the system you need to monitor on what it is that can be done. There's no central way to post a request. A lot of times it's email or it's, oh, this went down. How do we you know, how come we didn't know that? How can we find that out? So we're always behind the eight ball. We're, we're kind of reacting to issues and not really getting ahead of, of things. And then finally, a lot of the times when we're gathering information on this, it's very time consuming because it's a lot of back and forth. And does this work? Does that work? Um, so there's a lot of time involved in that. Something that I've come across in my time working with operations manager, probably about uh, two or three years ago, I came up with an InfoPath form that we can post to SharePoint uh, that allows us to generate this information, generate these requests, watch it, and then of course using SharePoint track whether or not monitoring has been involved. And uh, there are some nice things to this form that we'll show you in a moment. Um, first off, it's dynamic. So instead of just saying, here's all the things that we can do, just fill in the places that you want, you'll see it's a dynamic form that moves and presents more information based on the systems that they choose to monitor. It also explains the monitor. So it's a nice place for the person requesting monitoring to sit back and uh, maybe have a, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and try to get a good grasp on what's available as opposed to you trying to explain it. Um, it asks the proper questions. Um, Again, the goal here is to get the information you need to properly apply the monitor. It says it's a request for future reference, and it can reference existing lists. So if you have a list of applications or platforms or servers, maybe from your configuration manager platform, or applications that are services that you uh, offer in service manager, well, it can reference those lists and things like that. So let's go ahead and take a look uh, at the form here. And what we'll do is we'll switch to InfoPath for that. So I'm now in InfoPath form filler. The designer for InfoPath is probably a little overwhelming for what I want to explain here. Um, but if you're not familiar with InfoPath, it basically is a form generator. It allows you to design forms with different data connections for retrieving information and also for posting the form. So um, you have a lot of options in terms of dynamicness of the form where the information comes from, how you gather this information, and then how it's presented. And it does it all with XML. So it doesn't require a large skill set in designing forms, um, but allows you to generate a lot of information. So let's take a look at this real quick. So this is just a form for operations manager monitoring requests. And what I try to do is I start up here with the platform and the application. So is this, for example, uh, dealing with uh, Exchange? And if so, uh, what type? Outlook Web Access. And so this, the person in here can start to type what they have, change it to whatever they want, and as they complete this and it posts to a SharePoint list, 
the drop list starts to populate with pre-existing platforms. So instead of one saying Microsoft Exchange, one saying Exchange Server 2016, one saying Exchange 2016, and perhaps a fourth saying Exchange, once the first one's submitted, we can pull back from that. And there's plenty of resources online available on how to do this InfoPath. Then we have the application name. Same thing applies here. So they can type in here that we need to monitor perhaps the Outlook Web Access portion, the uh, website. We'll go ahead and have them type in Outlook Web Access. And then we start picking our servers. And so they're going to type in a server name. What does the server do and what environment is it in? Production, staging, development, test, training, things of that nature. Because understand, we might have different notification parameters for different environments. So what we've done is we've isolated our requester to a particular platform and application instead of just saying, give me all the servers. And then they can start typing in servers here. And each time they click this, they can add an additional server. So let's just put in some names here. And we'll uh, keep this very generic for the purposes of the demo. And so now we can move down into the monitoring. So I've presented in this case is basic explanations of the types of monitors that we build. And as we get into some of the future videos in this course, you're going to learn more about things like application performance monitoring. We will discuss the process monitors and the service monitors and things of that nature. Um, so what I've done is I've included descriptions in here so that they can read about it almost like they're shopping and say, oh, yes, I need application performance monitoring. And when they check that box, it presents more information. OK, so let me go ahead and uncheck this box. Scroll down and show you we've lost a section down here. So they're going to choose what they would like for monitoring. Now let's go ahead and continue down this form. We'll also say that we want a uh, process monitor as well, and that will add a process monitor section. So let's discuss further down the line. The next area is alerts and reporting configuration. So where do we get administrative alerts? They go to a core group of people responsible for the app and are sent to all severities and criticalities 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we'll make phone calls if it's a critical and high priority alert. So who am I going to email when we get just all the alerts? And who are we going to contact on critical alerts? And finally, if we make a roll-up report for what has happened in the last 24 hours, who receives those? So now what I'm building is my notification schedule and any reporting requirements in these sections. I've added the application performance monitoring. And so what I have here is a series of systems. And we can choose our server. We can choose the application namespace, the site name, and IIS. The reason I ask these things is, as you'll see in APM monitoring uh, video and training on what APM is, this is exactly the information we need to monitor using APM, or at least to get started. OK, and again, we can add another web application if there's more than one web application on the uh, system that they'd like monitored. Uh, finally, because APM requires a person to kind of review the results and take a look at what came up, what needs to be monitored, and where we need to build our thresholds, I just asked for a participant on who's going to be involved in determining monitoring thresholds. What I've done here is I've asked when I can reset IIS which servers they want monitored, what site and what application namespace, and finally, who's going to be involved. I now have all the information I need to build APM. Let's take a look at process monitoring. Same thing. Process monitoring has three different ways that we can monitor it in Ops Manager. To explain that, I've said, look, is this a critical process, which always has to be running? Optionally, I can request performance metrics on the process. Is it something I don't want running, and it would cause issues if it did? And finally, is it something that if it takes a long time to run, it should only run for a few minutes, but if it runs for 20 minutes, then is that a problem? So let's look at a critical process. Critical process, give me the path to the executable. Which servers can it run on? And if there's multiple, add each server. Generate alert if the number of processes uh, is below the minimum value or above the maximum value. So if there should only be one process, then say, one, two, and then how long uh, should that 
be out of band, out of scope. Receives alerts for this process. I'm going to go back to my groups up here, and I'm going to reference those. So who receives the alert? Administrative alert group, the critical alert group, or someone else? And what's the severity of an alert generated by this? Well, this is a high severity alert. Now I know everything that I need to monitor that process, and I can click in here and add another one. So what we just reviewed was a, an InfoPath form that allows us to gather that information. It's something I've built. Um, it's something that uh, it can be built by you, and it can be built in a variety of platforms. If you have skills or you know someone with skills in web forms, it can certainly be built in something such as HTML5. The concept here is that you take a look at the monitoring that you're going to provide, basically the services that you're going to offer, and you gather as much information as you can from your target audience in advance. It does take time to make this type of request form, but what I've found over the years is that it does make my life much easier in the long term. So it's an initial investment of time and patience to get this right. However, it will pay off dividends in the long run as you uh, expand your utilization of Operations Manager.